Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. As you can see from your screen, lesson five, titled Experiments and Ethics. Uh, so we're gonna have, we kinda got two topics in here today. We're gonna talk about uh, some features of experiments and then some ethics and some principles uh, that all researchers take into account. So every experiment has a hypothesis or an educated guess about what the researcher expects the outcome to be. So when you come up with your idea for your experiment, you will come up with a hypothesis or an educated guess. I think that the taller kids are going to be better at basketball. The, reason, the researcher has some reason for believing this. Well, taller people are generally better at basketball. They have an easier time putting it in the hoop. I think the taller kids are going to be better. Uh, in a hypothesis, a psychologist will state what he or she expects to find. The hypothesis also specifies the important variables of the study. So we're going to talk about variables. There's two types of variables in, uh, the, in psychological studies. Uh, the first type is the independent variable. This is the variable that the experimenters change or alter so you can observe the effects. Uh, in a medical study, this might be changing the dosage, or in a psychological study about learning, this might be changing the difficulty of the questions or the time given in between questions, uh, or food given during the question. You know, the, what are you going to change, food or not? That's the independent variable. The dependent variable is the variable that changes in relation to the independent variable. So in these examples of the test, where you're given amounts of time or food, it would be the score that would change. Uh, and then we would say that that score is dependent on the independent variable. So uh, it, the dependent variable is what changes in relation to the independent variable. You get to decide what the independent variable is, and then the dependent variable changes on its own. For example, the number of hours you study is an independent variable. You get to choose how many hours you study and it affects your performance on an exam, which would be the dependent variable, how well you do. So the number of hours that you study affects how well you do on the exam. Uh, independent variable is what you choose, and then what comes out at the end is the dependent variable. So we will also have participants that are, that are in two different groups. So participants that are exposed to the independent variable are the experimental group. So these are the ones that we you know, perform the experiment on. They're the experimental group. And then we have the participants that are treated the same way as the experimental group, except they're not exposed to it, the independent variable. Uh, they make up the control group. So they are just doing the experiment as though you know nothing has changed in their lives and the reason that is important is that without a control group, the researcher cannot be sure the independent variable caused the change in the dependent variable. So if we know that nothing has changed except our independent variable, we can say that that is what caused the change. If there are multiple things that have changed, we can't say that that in particular is what causes the change. So we need to have an experimental group and a control group. Without the control group, the experiment isn't very valid. So you're also going to want to have a control group in your experiment if possible. Uh, so by comparing the way the experimental group behaved in an experiment, uh, the researchers can determine whether the independent variable influences behavior and how it does so. So they do this using statistics, lots of math, um, but that is an important part of it to see whether that change in the independent variable uh, influences the dependent variable. Psychologists do not fully accept the results of their own experiments or other people's experiments until the results have been replicated multiple times. If you just find out one thing uh, about in this experiment, um, you want to test it out a couple of different times on a couple of different groups to ensure that um, you know, it wasn't just a one-off or a mistake or something else wasn't influencing it. So you wanna have replicated studies. Ethics. So uh, ethics are a method 
uh, methods of conduct or standards for proper and responsible behavior. Essentially, it's kind of like um, unspoken rules, though at one point uh, the American Psychology Association did you know, speak these rules, but um, ethics are a little bit flexible. They're different to different people, but what a standard or proper and responsible behavior is, that might not be the same to you and I or to another researcher. So uh, the American Psychology Association came up with these standards for um, dealing with humans and animals, uh, and sometimes these ethics aren't always followed to a T. Uh, so researchers use recognized standards of competence and ethics to minimize the possibility of misleading results. Any ethical problems that you have with an experiment need to be resolved before the research is started so that you don't get to a point where you need to make a spot in your a decision in your you know you have a short amount of time so these are some not all but some of the ethical principles from the APA psychologists are responsible for the dignity confidentiality and welfare of the participants so you cannot cause harm to them you cannot you know take away their dignity or make them feel terrible about themselves you cannot release their identities you're responsible for that as well as all research they um, perform by others under your supervision. So uh, a psychologist might have multiple people performing experiments under their supervision. That uh, trained and um, certified psychologist is responsible for all of those experiments. Um, psychologists have to obey all state and federal laws and regulations as well as professional standards governing research. So depending on what uh, province, uh, university you're at, what state or country you're in. Uh, they might have different laws, regulations, and professional standards. Wherever you are, you must obey those. And otherwise, your experiment is considered invalid and won't be published. Uh, except for anonymous surveys, naturalistic observations, and other similar research, psychologists must reach an agreement regarding the rights and responsibilities of participants before the research is started. So when I participated in the studies in my psychology class, I was required often to sign something before I went in. Uh, I stated kind of like how long it would take, um, you know, what in general would be happening. Didn't state the purpose of the experiment because that is something that they want to um, keep from you until you perform the experiment so you don't bring your bias in but then they often debrief with you after. Uh, they often will um, also require consent. Uh, so a psychologist must uh, obtain a signed informed consent before starting any research with a participant. So um, there was one that would take quite a while. I had to sign that I wouldn't leave, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, deception is only used if no better alternative is available and under no uh, condition is there to be deception about negative aspects of a participant. Uh, so it's negative aspects of the experiment that might influence a participant's willing to, willingness to participate. So if part of the experiment is having to spend some time underwater and holding your breath, I need to tell you that that is what is going on or you'll need to do that uh, because that may negatively uh, influence you that may um, freak you out for a longer period of time than just the experiment um, you cannot deceive someone unless there is absolutely no other option uh, so um, often you can essentially say deception is not allowed um, unless it is completely benign as long as there's no negative aspects to it um, you know if I tell you that this is green when it's actually red if that's part of the experiment then that's okay. There's no lasting psychological effects to that. Uh, and other issues that are covered by the APA standards include sharing and utilizing data, uh, offering inducements uh, like into hypnosis, uh, minimizing evasiveness, and providing the participants with information about the study after they have participated. So usually you got like a five to ten minute debrief with the person who did the experiment. Uh, and there was this one where the whole experiment was about how I sat and where I sat and where I chose to put the chair and how I chose to position myself in the room uh, in different sequences in the experiment. So it was nothing about 
like the 45 minute interview that I did, it was all about my body language and the position of my chair and the position of the researcher's chair and in relation to them. So uh, I was deceived at first. There were no negative aspects to it and I was debriefed after. So uh, all of these things were thought out before the experiment. And we're into the your job. So again, we've got three terms, bias, ethics, and placebo. Please check those out. It's very important that you check out placebo in particular before the next lesson. And uh, complete the assignment, exploring ethical guidelines. If you guys have any questions at all, I am around, send me an email, Google Meet in class. But thank you so much for watching everyone. I appreciate it and I will see you soon.